case, so now that we have all of this stuff set up, there's going to be a couple of things that I'm going to want to check when setting up this website layout. The first thing that I'm going to want to check my preferences because I'm going to want to do everything inside of pixels. Now, I can use my text tool here, and I'm just going to hit the letter T to access the text tool. And what that'll do is it'll show me what my units of measurements are here. Notice that I'm in points, all right? Now, I could still come in here and type in, let's say, 12px and hit the Enter key, and it'll go ahead and it'll take that conversion and convert it to whatever the preferences are. That's all well and good, but a lot of the times I'm very, very paranoid about it, so I usually just say, let's just go ahead and just change the preferences. We'll do that. We'll go ahead and we'll click on Photoshop, and I'm going to go to Preferences, and then I'm going to go to Units and Rulers. Under the Units and Rulers, I'm going to make sure that my rulers are set to pixels, and my height is set to pixels as well. I'll go ahead and I'll click OK. Now, I could also just right-click right here on the ruler and change it. So, to show and hide the rulers, you can do a Control Command R, and I'll go ahead and I'll bring them up. Now, that deals with the Preferences section. Let's go ahead and throw down some guides so that we can start working on some stuff here. Now, easiest way for you to throw guides down, you could obviously drag them and move them out. But then you're always really tied to using the info panel to see whether or not you got them exactly where you want them. So that's good, not great. Easier way, just go to view and go to new guide. Under the new guide, you can go ahead and set up vertical and horizontal guides from here. Now, again, what I'm going to talk about here are not hard and fast rules, just recommendations. I usually tell people, for the most part, any kind of logo type and any kind of logo design that you're going to do should stick about 150 to 160 pixels off of the top of the page. So I'm going to do 160 pixels off of the right, and let's just go ahead and do another one. And where's my guides? Where's my guides? There's a guide, and I'm going to make it 160 pixels as a horizontal guide. So anything that I do from a logo and a design standpoint, Everything sits here, and if I'm doing a layout that has navigation on this side, I really don't want to pass these sections. Matter of fact, I actually would try to keep this around 150 pixels. That is a good barometer to have. Again, there's people that break it all the time, so don't think it's a hard, fast rule, but what I usually tell people is this is the area of design intent. Right. This is the space that you're going to use to be able to let the viewer know anything that you think the most important, like your name or the company name, like any kind of prior navigation, how to be able to get around, or any kind of secondary navigation, should you want to put navigation on this side. By the time that you hit the bottom of this, you should have already had all of your navigation set up, all of your navigation set up, uh, established, and any kind of main message that you want to send the client should be right here, right? Anything that's under here is going to scroll and you run a chance, not a hundred percent, but you run a chance that your client's not going to be able to see it. So when they were talking about splash pages and people talked about those starting pages, the starting page was a splash page, right? It's supposed to make a splash. It was supposed to leave a client an impression. And that's kind of bastardized a little bit where all of a sudden a splash page, you see these things that kind of move around and spin and have video with music that more often than not, to be honest, a lot of people just hit skip. So in that, what will happen is you want to use the splash page to have it be the specific area of intent. You want it to be the, the area where you're going to have the maximum amount of message and you can't do that if you have navigation and load type going all the way down three quarters on the page. So stick these kind of recommendations, break them as you see fit, but they're things that you kind of want to keep in mind. Once you have this all set, the last thing that I usually like talking to people about here is prepping your graphic. First thing that I'll do is obviously get rid of the background. I'm going to make a, before I do that, I'm just going to again make a new solid color fill layer. And let's just I'm going to get black because I almost always make everything black. It's easier for you guys to see the guides. Now, I make this, and I'm going to turn around and double-click on this, and I'm going to call it Web Background. I'll go ahead, and the next thing I do is I grab Background Layer, trash it. I don't need it. This is going to be the mat of the web page. Once that's set, I'll go ahead and I'll start parsing out all of the different elements into groups. Like right now, this is going to be the background. If it's the background, let's go ahead and throw that into a group. And click right here on the folder icon and what that's going to do is it's going to create a new group 
called group one. Now, there's nothing in it, see, expand, contract. But watch this. Now, if I hold down the shift key and I click on the group, I had, the, I had this layer highlighted. I'm gonna move it out and just show you. All right, have it highlighted. I'm gonna hold on the shift key and I'm gonna click on the group. It throws it in the group. Now, I can go ahead and take this group and call it background elements. Now that I have that set, anything that's going to be a background, right? If it's going to be a pattern, or I'm going to have a design that's going to kind of fade out. Anything gets thrown in the background elements that pertains to the background. Navigation will get a folder called navigation elements. Keeps your code clean, or it keeps your Photoshop file clean. It makes it easier for you to be able to find all those files as the layout starts getting a little bit more and more complex.